Hello, hello, this is Matt, and welcome to another Animating Mathematically, where I animate a mathematical idea and uh, then turn it into a GIF and put it up on my blog. So uh, today I'm interested in refraction, which is the bending of light when it passes from one material into, into another. So, uh, check out this really well-drawn guy. He can look at his fish uh, in the, at an angle that they aren't existing at, because when the light goes at, uh, in, into the boundary of the water, it actually bends, so it appears like the fish is somewhere else. But um, it's all it's a bit confusing why it ought to be the case that um, that light should bend when it reaches a different material. And uh, I'm going to try and explain it with an analogy, which is uh, crossing the road. So my idea is that um, when you're uh, crossing the road, well, let's start drawing the picture. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll have a road which is h high. Um, h equals two for now, and we'll be drawing the the road like this. So the uh, the minimum x is minus one, minimum y is zero, maximum x is one, and maximum h h is the maximum y. So that gives us uh, a nice rectangle. Uh, but let's not make it black. Let's make it kind of grey. Okay. And we want uh, pavements or sidewalks. So uh, if we draw like this. Um, minus 0 0.8 up to 0 0.8 then we'll get, okay so the lighter grey is the sidewalk and then darker grey is the road so the idea is you want to start at, uh, oh let me just boost this while I remember, boost up the, the zoom um, so the idea is you're at one point on the left and you want to walk to another point on the right but um, there are no cars at the moment, but you don't want to uh, spend too long on the road in case one comes. So the idea is that um, uh, if there was no road in the middle, your best path between the two points would be a straight line. But because there's a road in the middle, it will change. Uh, it will change your best path, and we'll see you in this uh, video. In this uh, video, yeah, um, how it will change your path. Okay, so um, uh, let's start drawing in the point on the left and the point on the right. Uh, okay, so let's actually make the road a fixed height. So h is 6.5, say, and okay, maybe not that maybe not that thin of a section, 3.5 okay, maybe it's just 3 okay, 3 leaks, okay and now we'll uh, call h the the height of the point on the left, so we'll have um, let's manipulate h between 0 and uh, 0 and 2.5 and we'll draw the rectangle a bit lower down and now we'll have the point on the left will be P1 equal to uh, minus 1 0 and the, the point on the very far right, which we'll call P4, is 1H. Okay, so now we can draw those points on. Uh, so we'll draw large points, uh, P1 and P2, uh, P4. Okay, so as we change H, that's changing our final destination on the right there. Uh, 
let's make the it start off at one. Okay, and make the one on the left blue and the one on the right red. Okay, cool. So now I want to think about what uh, uh, what our um, objective is when crossing the road, and I'll talk about that in terms of minimizing a cost. I'll say that for every second you're on the, the pavement, there's a fixed uh, cost, and every second you're on the road, there's a fixed cost. Okay, and also you want to minimize the total time it takes, and you're going at a, a fixed speed. So, um, Let's put in, let's manipulate another value y because we want to. y be zero, between 0 and h. And we'll call p2 uh, 0 0.2, which is, uh, sorry, minus 0 0.8, which is the boundary of the sidewalk, and y. And we'll do. Uh, a black point at P2. Okay, so now we can vary Y. It will give us a point on the road. And whichever point we want to leave the sidewalk or the pavement, um, the, our best path to get to there has to be a straight line. Um, because it, uh, our, our cost of being on the pavement is uh, um, doesn't depend on where the, on the pavement you are. So we can draw the line between P1 and P2, and that's where we'll walk to. And now um, I, I can argue by symmetry that P3 has to be equal to 0 0.8 and then h minus y. And let's just draw that on as well. p3 here. So that means that uh, the angle, well, yeah, this is the symmetry here. And draw on this next line. OK. So our solution will have to be something like this. Um, this might be a bit more clear when I define what our cost is as a function. So our cost will be a function of h and y, and we'll have to pick y to be the best one. Um, so cost we'll do this, uh, copy this part here copy this now what's the total um, length of time spent walking this path it is uh, the distance between P2 and P1 plus the distance between P3 and P2 plus the uh, distance between P4 and P3 Let's start plotting this. So for a fixed h, let's plot over y. y between dot and h. Now this minimum here, at the moment, will just cause us to put the um, to put y so they lines up into a straight line, because minimizing this whole thing is just gonna is just putting all this into one line straight line and that is the global um, shortest path between these two points um, right so now um, to make the road stand out differently from the sidewalk we um, will add an extra term to our cost of crossing the road which is how long we spend, which is proportional to how long we spend on the road, which is this, P3 minus P2 times uh, constant proportionality lambda, um, 
which will be in units of you know cost per um, distance traveled on the road you know and for a fixed value of lambda try l lambda equals one that pushes the minimum a bit further so that means that we're pushing y a bit higher up which as you can see will m lengthen the time on the side sidewalks a bit but but shorten the time on the on the road okay so now we have this cost let's try and uh, work out how to minimize this so in Mathematica we can you can use a minimize function we can minimize the cost h y and lambda for a fixed uh, h say 1 and a fixed lambda try 1 we can minimize res with respect to y and it will give us our solution. So let's uh, do that here. So we want to do let's write y over y optimal and do this. We're minimizing h y lambda. So now let's also manipulate lambda between zero and say 5, starting off at 1. If lambda is 0, then it will just give us a straight line, hopefully. So minimize this. y o is equal to... No, actually, we can't use y here. Uh, we have to do this, because this will give us uh, a rule. The second argument is a rule. So we take the second uh, thing in the list use the rule uh, like this so now we'll have y o, y o and to use y o let's um, write p2 o which is the optimal p2 which should be minus 0 0.8 y o and P3O, which is the optimal P3, 0 0.8 uh, H minus YO. And we can draw on here the optimal solution. Uh, P3, oh, sorry, P2 optimal. So maybe let's make these purple and dashed lines and P3O, P2O, P3O. See what this looks like. Okay, so the purple line is the the best path across the road, depending on lambda, which tells you um, how much you care about um, being on the road, like how how much extra um, how much extra discomfort you get from being on the road compared to the sidewalk. So if it's zero then it does the straight line thing where uh, you know the, we just go across the road as if it wasn't there and changing h uh, changing h doesn't matter it's still a straight line and if we increase lambda then uh, then we get it so that we uh, take a sharp corner at the boundary between the road and the sidewalk and this is um, an analogy for light because um, light can be s the path that light takes can be seen as a minimizer of um, of the time it takes to get from one point to another and the speed of light actually changes when you go into a different boundary so it's as if you, we could actually walk we were walking slower on the road but and here in this model we walk at the same pace at all times but it gives us the same uh, nice answer now let's try and think about um, what uh, the um, what the um, angle of incidence and the angle of refraction are here and therefore uh, the coefficient in Snell's law would be 
Um, no. The way to do that would be to n try and work out uh, the coefficient n. We need to do the sine of the angle of incidence over the sine of the angle of refraction. Now this angle of incidence is uh, the angle, vector angle, between uh, P2, so now we're just work, let's just work with the optimal one now, P2O minus P1O a bit minus P1. This vector and the normal with the road, which is uh, minus one zero sine of this. So let's just do n equals that for now and see if it looks like the right kind of thing. If we put it on the plot, see here, if we drop it to, to here, if we make that, uh, if we drop h, then yeah, it's going down to zero. Okay, good. Let's for now not draw these, just the optimal solution. So we have sine of this angle of uh, incidence so far, but we need to divide by the angle of refraction, which is very similar. Should be P3O minus P2O. Okay, so if lambda is zero, it's just one. That means no bending. And as you increase lambda, it's more and more bending. Now the math is quite neat here because if we actually look at the value of lambda we have. Here lambda is 1.46 and the coefficient in Snell's law is 2.46. So actually all is one plus lambda. 4.21 is 5.21, if we put in uh, pi, then uh, it's 1 plus pi. So um, I've shown the skeleton of uh, my notebook here and how I've made, how I've optimized the cost function of how to cross the road. And this is how I imagine most mathematicians, if they got out at a shop here, they wanted to get to a shop over here. Uh, and they didn't really like being on the road as much as they like being on the sidewalk, they'd uh, optimize this in their heads and cross at the same uh, angle as a light which goes through air into a block of glass and, uh, and then uh, back into the air again. So I'll, um, I'll uh, post, make this into an animation or a diagram and uh, post it up on my blog soon. And uh, until next time, goodbye.